Welcome back to the Beat Break Morning Show with your host, Sean Garvey, the architect, Star Kells, and DJ Rollon. Before I bring on my guest this morning, I want to remind everyone in the ATL, in the city of Atlanta, and the outskirts of the ATL, just a reminder that if you are now waking up to the Beat Break Morning Show, or if you have stayed on with us since 6 a.m. after 10 a.m., you can go back to sleep, parents. Because you do not have to take your children to school today. Hand clap for that. Of course, this is an honor of the Atlanta Braves winning the World Series. So all of my Fulton County, Cobb County, and DeKalb and Clay in school parents, staff, teachers, and educators, you do not have to report to school today. You do not have to report to work. Schools are closed in those areas, including Marietta City Schools. So once again, Fulton County, DeKalb County, including uh, Clayton County, Cobb County, and APS, by the way, Atlanta Public Schools, they are shut down in observance of the Braves winning the World Series. So you can take your ass back to sleep after the morning show at 10 a.m., or you can stay up and listen to us on demand and on the shows that are airing right now on this station, all right? And of course, ladies and gentlemen, Atlanta City Council President Felicia Moore and Councilman Andre Dickens are in a runoff. That is right, folks. So uh, we got a little bit of time before we will know who will be the next mayor of Atlanta. And speaking of Atlanta, ladies and gentlemen, you know we can't do a special edition of the Beat Break Morning Show, All Things Considered Atlanta. We can't do a show without remembering the life and legacy of our sister girl, Jovita Moore, a very iconic news anchor here in Atlanta, uh, who unfortunately passed away due to complications from an aggressive brain cancer that she's been suffering and battling with for several months this year. And I wanted to uh, take an opportunity to bring a seasoned news anchor on the morning show. We reached out to so many news anchors, but this one right here uh, is great at what she does. And she also remembers Jovita Moore being that she has been a great mentor and a role model to this great news anchor that I have on the morning show. We have Simone Jameson on the Beat Break Morning Show. Good morning. How are you doing? Hi, good morning. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you so much, Beat Great Beat Break Radio team. It's um it's an honor and pleasure to be on with y'all this morning. Absolutely. And and this is your first time being on the Beat Break Morning Show. I knew you a couple of years ago back when we had the award ceremony. And you came up to us and interviewed us. And you definitely had some great skills and you still have some great skills. You um, did some news reporting for Fox for a Fox affiliate. I and did. Other news stations before that and after that. Mm-hmm. I did. I um so after we had met uh, at that time in my career, I was hosting and um, interviewing several different people on the red carpet. And um, it just sort of went up from there. And I started working with the Fox affiliate in um, Arkansas, Jonesboro, Arkansas is kind of where uh, where my TV news reporting career really kicked off. And that was four years ago now. And so from the Fox affiliate in Jonesboro, Arkansas, um, transitioned up to, uh, to be a reporter in, um, in Albany, Georgia, uh, bringing me a little bit closer to my folks in Atlanta and um, stayed there for about a year and some change. And now I am here working as a reporter and fill in anchor and investigative journalist for Watch Fox 57 in Columbia, South Carolina. So about three hours away, not too far from Atlanta. Love it. I love it. Doing big things. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to set the stage up as we are remembering Javita Moore. Shout outs to Rashad Ritchie from News and Talk 1380 WALK, who I had the 
honor and the opportunity to produce his show last Friday, this past Friday, actually, uh, one week ago. And he was the first person in media, ladies and gentlemen, to break the news story about Javita Moore passing away from brain cancer. And it was me and another producer in the studio that morning. We were in numb. We were in numb. But at the same time, I thought that it was a rumor. Now, even though, of course, several months ago, Javita came out publicly and told people that she was diagnosed with brain cancer, it started out as a brain tumor and then aggressively advanced to brain cancer. I still thought it was a rumor. We were, of course, still in, in that place of rooting for the Jovita Moore to recover, to make a speedy recovery, but I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. So I took the opportunity to reach out to the parent company of WSB TV in Atlanta, where she has done the newscast for so many years now. Uh, the parent company is Cox Media Group. I reached out to a representative from Cox Media Group. And of course, due to legal purposes, the person could not release any information about the status of Javita Moore. And then a few moments later, Justin Farmer, uh, another news anchor on WSB TV here in Atlanta, of course, told everyone uh, that Javita Moore passed away. And it was just a very gloomy Friday, October 29th, 2021. It was a very gloomy day. We did not, most of us did not expect the inevitable to happen. But let's say you, uh, Simone, when you first heard about the story, when you first heard about the passing of Javita Moore, what went through your mind? Oh my goodness. So I'm going to take you guys back a little bit. Uh, I did not hear about it immediately. I was because I had been so busy with work, you know, we're transitioning into sweeps at our station, which is the most busiest time, one of the busiest times of the year in news. So I was working on several stories uh, over the past few days. And I remember being in a Starbucks, editing a story that was gonna air at five and 10 uh, that night. And I checked my email and I'm going through my work email. And there was one particular email that stuck out to me. It was from the Georgia Democrats, a, a group that I, a political activist group that I follow um, to, to just for news leads and um, other tips. And the headline was Georgia Democrats mourn the loss of Jovita Moore. And I said, wait, what? So I knew she had, she was diagnosed with that aggressive brain cancer and that did not sound good in the beginning, but I saw this email and I was, and I was taken aback. I was like, it's Jovita, Jovita Moore. And so then I click out of that email and I had to Twitter and there was a tweet from Tyler Perry with a picture of Jovita. And it, it said, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing, but it said, I will miss your presence in my living room every day. We knew you fought with everything you could. And I said, and that's when it kind of hit me. I said, oh my gosh, Jovita Moore, she, she passed away. She is no longer with us. And my, just the extent of my feelings, I was, I was taken aback and I was shock. I think I sat there in the Starbucks uh, for a good five, maybe 10 minutes and just in silence. Because Jovita Moore over the decades really has been such an influence to me and so many other broadcast journalists and not just even us in broadcast, but um, but reporters, really people, people, men and women in media all across this country. And um, I remember one of my first interactions with her started in college. I, um, 
I was studying mass communication at Georgia College um, in around 2010, 2011, 2012, that time. And I sent an email to Monica Kaufman, which was one of the main anchors at the time, and wanting to get a little more insight in terms of how to break into the field, in terms of what to do, how to prepare. And Monica Kaufman responded and she said, she said, Simone, I'm sorry at this time, I'm just really busy. You know, I have a lot going on, you know, here at WSB. I suggest that you reach out to Jovita. And um, later did. And um, she was, she, she became not only a role model, but uh, a mentor. And she was that figure really to me and so many other people in the industry. I actually got an opportunity to see her at uh, the National Association of Black Journalists in 2019, but unfortunately did not get to uh, speak to her um, in person that day. But just really taking y'all back over the years, um, her kind words or her words of encouragement, uh, just, just in being sure of yourself and molding your craft, and being able to handle rejection and just taking yourself on a path of becoming better and better. Uh, that was the legacy that she left and those were the words that she left. And uh, that's part of the wisdom, you know, that was imparted on me. And just, Looking back, just going to the newscast, you know, I would come in and I would watch um, multiple WSB broadcasts with her and Justin Farmer, so the two J's, Justin Farmer and Jovita Moore. And I just remember watching her every night and was just thinking, you know, she's so poised, beautiful, graceful, just so many just poised, just, just so many high words of esteem that you can use about this woman because she was so good at what she did. And then she was, she was kind and she, she cared. And you can tell that she cared about your success as an aspiring upcoming journalist. It, it, she just seemed like she wanted everybody to win. And, um, I think that's what I'm gonna really miss the most. You know, after I heard the news, I it took me it took me a few a couple days to process, but I I think I was in my room just one day and I just just broke out in tears and I just wasn't even expecting to. And I was just thinking, man, you know, what she had to go through is just not fair. And yeah. eh, it's just the the legacy and just it, her kind words and just her commanding presence too. She just had that aura about her where you just felt like you you knew her. I mean, I wouldn't even really say that I I I knew her very well. I did it per, on a personal level. Uh, I have a mentor that actually was very close friends with her that I still. Um, that I still keep in contact with uh, pretty regularly, but she just made you feel like you knew her, even if you didn't, just with her mm -hmm. commanding presence, with her uh, grace, with the way that she told each story. And those are some of the things that stick with me and that I want to continue to carry on in my own career. You know, that charisma, uh, being relatable, being able to connect with everybody, even though I might not have even met them personally. It's just something that she had. She had it. You know, when you hear about the it factor and people having it, she had it. And I, I can only hope to be a fraction, 20%, 50% of, um, of the legend that she was to Atlanta. Mm, mm.
kind words. You know, Simone, in the industry that we work in, there have been so many times people that we knew of in the news business that have passed away. And some have not been able to get their flowers or at least until they transition. I felt as though Javita Moore always received her flowers each and every day because she was so very iconic in the 20 years and, and more that she spent doing the news. Every time you see her just in Atlanta from where I'm from, just seeing her in the newscast coming with her demanding presence, like you said. I remember back in 2006, she did a newscast about the uh, new mandate for people to switch from analog TV to digital. And for her to just be a part of that historic day and time for people who had television sets, who had analog TV to switch to digital, it was so great to see Javita more present in that historic moment. And then following after that, just her consistency and her commitment to a big news organization like WSB and also being the person person who had the time uh, in her busy schedule, because we all know Javita is, is, is busy. She got kids, she got her own personal life, but at the same time, she even took the time to just come on other people's platforms and shows to talk about her experiences in journalism and news and in the career that she was in and touch so many lives, including Monica Pearson that you talked about, Monica Kaufman Pearson, who went on Twitter and said that excellent reporter, anchor, and person, I will miss you on the air, Godspeed, and enjoy your granddaughter. This is what Monica Kaufman Pearson said on Twitter about Javita Moore. And the condolences and the comments are going to keep going on and on and on. Um, because she she is still here in the spirit, just not in the physical. But that's how much of an impact Jovita Moore has made to people. And unfortunately, I didn't get the opportunity nor the honor to meet Jovita Moore in person as well. We actually, true story, we actually, me and at the time, Wanderlyn Stokes, who I was also producing for over at WLK in Atlanta, we were supposed to have Jovita Moore come on her show doing the woman month march or the woman month um we were honoring and dedicating women of influence and davida confirmed that she will make an appearance on wanderland stokes show this was last year before the pandemic hit and unfortunately uh, some things came up on her end to where she couldn't commit to it she couldn't make it to the studio and i was like dang you know it would be so so nice to have someone of her statue come on a platform and just talk about her experiences, what she's been through, and also give advice and tips to young reporters and, and even seasoned reporters like yourself on what it takes to survive in this crazy, crazy industry. Because it is a crazy industry. You know, we've been in it for a long time. But for somebody who has been in it for as long as she did, it would just be so great to hear that from a person like Javita Moore. I know you got to go, but any last words, any last remarks that you would like to uh, give to the people about Ms. Javita Moore? Yes, absolutely. And we want to point out that her influence, especially to women of color like myself, uh, as a little brown girl watching a brown girl, <laughs> on a television nightly commanding living rooms and citizens everywhere across Atlanta, delivering that news with such power, with such authority. That's something that really stuck out to me, you know, as, as a Black journalist. And that's something that will continue to precede her and a legacy that will carry on for years and, and years and long after um, even all of us are gone, I feel like. So it's just, it was really, it was really an honor to, to um, 
to see her at NABJ, to, to see, to receive kind words, to, um, to see her broadcast, uh, to study her essentially too. And um, to see this role model of mine um, being so very loved and so very highly regarded and remembered and, and given her flowers, Sean, you'd mentioned that too, even while she was alive. That was something um, really touching to see as well. Mm -hmm. But everything that she, that she imparted on um, all of us journalists, you know, we will, we will pay that forward. You know, I'll be sure, certain to do that. And, and hopefully one of these days soon, uh, I'm in Colombia now, but um, the plan is to be back in Atlanta. So, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how, um, we'll see how the months and, and um, year ahead unfolds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and speaking of the ATL, Simone, I gotta shout out my city, the ATL, for representing Javita Moore like they have over the past few days in honor and memory of Javita Moore. Even when she was alive and she was still battling brain cancer, there were signs up, billboard signs up, saying hashtag stay strong, Javita. I mean, we really, really represented the city in honor of Miss Javita Moore. And yesterday in the ATL, there was a public viewing of Javita Moore uh, and there will be some more information coming out in the next few hours or one or two days ahead uh, for more information about Jovita Moore uh, funeral services. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, you know, of course, we are dedicating this entire episode to Miss Jovita Moore, but we also got to represent for the ATL. You know, I got on my ATL jacket. I said that I'm going to wear my ATL jacket throughout the entire week not only just for the Braves and for the election, yes, but also for Javita Moore, because she definitely represented from Atlanta. She wasn't born in Atlanta, but she made Atlanta her second home. You know, she's a New Yorker. And that's, that's one of the things that me and Javita had in common. Like we're both Northern Southerners. So I thought that was really dope. That was really cool that she definitely represented from Atlanta, even though she's from New York. But she definitely represented Atlanta in a big and, way. And so, Sean, you know, yeah. um, Jovita and I too had that in common because I'm from New York originally. Hey, and yeah. So we all kind of Atlanta transplants. Um, yeah. So um, even though I live in Columbia now, grew up, spent um, a, most of my life in Atlanta, but was from New York too originally. So uh, no, and yes, no, and and call Atlanta. Um, the home, even though I'm in Columbia, South Carolina, right now, Atlanta is home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we look forward to seeing you soon, if or when you come back to the ATL and make some big things happen in the news and broadcasting industry. So more great things to come from Simone Jameson. Uh, and of course, once again, people can check you out where again? check out my broadcast yes yes yeah, so if you want to learn a little bit more about me and um what i do at watch fox 57 you can visit our website it's wach.com and in the search bar if you want to see my reports and my segments specifically uh you can search for simone james and i also produce an addicted america uh, segment for the station where um i produce highly targeted reports uh, about opioid, the opioid epidemic and opioid crisis in yeah. the Midlands in South Carolina. So that's something um, interesting that y'all can check out as well. Absolutely. Simone Jameson on the Beat Break Morning Show. Thank you so much for coming on with us this morning and sharing your thoughts on Javita Moore. Thank you so much, Sean and fam, for having me. It was a pleasure to be here. Happy to Absolutely. do it. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, just in case you didn't hear it on the day of 
Jovita Moore's passing, we are going to play a clip courtesy of WSB TV Atlanta in which Justin Farmer broke the news to millions and millions of viewers of Jovita Moore's passing. And at the end of the clip, there is a very important message that Ms. Jovita Moore passed on to everyone that became aware of her brain cancer uh, diagnosis before she transitioned. So I want you all to listen to that. And then of course, coming up, we got the ATL mixed by our very own DJ Volum as we continue to celebrate the life of Javita Moore and celebrate the hometown ATL. Stay tuned, y'all keep it locked. It's the Beat Break Morning Show. <laughs> 